Which of the latest advances in neurology do you consider the most significant? Uh, neuroprosthetics is the most um, important advance in neurology, I think, because for the first time, mm, neuroprosthetic fields offers a revolutionary treatment for many diseases that um, were, were considered untreatable mm, until now. So um, neuroprosthetics are devices that mm, connect um, neural circuitry to um, certain systems such as um, artificial limbs or um, communication devices or even you can um, imagine that you connect one area of the brain to another area of the brain and the, even more you can connect uh, two brains of different individuals all of them communicate with that's, each that's, other that's the top. what does your take on avatar project a complete prosthesis of the human body yeah, I completely support uh, the Avatar project, but of course I realize that there are many, 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 many mm, problems um, and um, many areas that need to be studied. So, mm, first of all, to mm, be able to establish communication within the living brain, with an artificial body, we need to um, know what um, signals the brain uses to encode information. We need to develop um, recording methods that help us to um, read signals from the brain and we need to de um, develop decoding algorithms that um, reconstruct uh, the content of the brain. Next, uh, if you are talking about artificial body, this body should approximate the functionality of our human mechanical body. So we need to have um, ro robotic bodies that can basically do what we can do normally. Walk, um, move our arms, um, even play sports. Um, uh, next, uh, this body sh should be sensorized with artificial sensors uh, that should um, approximate the functionality of our normal body. So they should have a um, sensation of touch, uh, proprioception, then uh, artificial vision, artificial um, hearing, and so, so on and so forth. A very difficult problem. Next, even more, if you are talking about uh, this um, artificial brain, say um, your biological brain became very old and you need to move the content of your brain to some artificial device. Here, a whole <laughs> a uh, new, new set of problems. Uh, first of all, how to make this artificial brain work in a similar way as your biological brain. Next, um, even if you are able to some degree of approximation read out the content of the brain, then transfer uh, um, these settings to an artificial brain what would happen with your consciousness? Would, uh, would uh, this artificial device be, um, be conscious? Uh, unknown. So it's, it's not going <laughs> to so, happen by 2045? Uh, certain things will ho happen by 2045. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> well, but uh, certain will require more time. So your uh, critical mind tells you when is it going to happen? Uh, actually, uh, uh, for this I know some rule. So when somebody estimates time, for example, for, for a scientific uh, project, you need to multiply by two and then go to the next level of units. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but this is a joke, of course. Yeah. And what are the main obstacles on the way to its implementation? So, um, um, I think uh, this project should uh, go mainly with the mainstream technologies. So mainstream technologies are the devices that help um, people in need, uh, the ones who have uh, motor disabil disabilities, sensory disabilities, um, paralyzed people. So when you give um, a paralyzed person an artificial arm or leg or even imagine a whole body, Basically, you uh, solve the first uh, problem of this 2045 project. 
And then, of course, all of this needs um, basic fundamental science because uh, without fundamental science development, you cannot solve certain practical issues. So you, you want to transfer the content of the brain, study the brain, understand how the brain works. What is the area of your research today? Tell us about your work prospects for application in medicine and other fields. So I work on um, animal models of brain-machine interfaces, so I work mostly with um, monkeys. So what we do, we implant monkeys with um, multiple electrodes in multiple brain areas, try to record as many neuronal signals we can, then we try to decode them and obtain some reasonable signals uh, from this. Um, our animals can use these uh, signals to control movements of artificial arms or legs. And then the next part is to um, deliver sensory feedback uh, back to the brain. So um, we call this artificial sensation. Um, if you um, apply electrical stimulation to a bra brain area that normally en encodes a sense of touch, then you mimic a sense of touch. Or if you apply it to the visual area, you create um, artificial vision and so on. Funny episodes? Funny episodes. <laughs> With uh, monkeys, there are many funny episodes. Okay. But um, t typically, um, everybody is very happy when the monkey learns something. So, um, mon mon monkeys, they like, try to keep their secrets <laughs> from us. <laughs> the day one we try to deliver artificial sensation, they mm, hide this from us. <laughs> but, but then, <laughs> once they find uh, this uh, sensation useful for them, this is when they reveal to us that they can read and understand this message. Tell us how you decode brain signals and set up the robot. Have you already done tests on humans? Mm. Mm, decoding of brain signals um, uses some idea about uh, what is um, how the brain encodes um, certain information. And uh, curiously, this idea that we currently use may be completely wrong. But um, science typically operates on correlations. So we measure one parameter and try to correlate it with another parameter. Then once this correlation is found, say between the rate of neuronal discharge and um, arm movements, then we say, oh, okay, so um, this neuron increases its activity when the arm moves. So it must be so that um, well, this neuron probably um, moves the arm by increasing its level of activity. So that's a good enough hypothesis for us and we can use it to control brain-machine interface. Of course, this could be all an epiphenomenon. So the, this neuron is doing something else and what we see is just a um, correlation. But with the development of fundamental science, I think we will be able to read these um, signals better and better understand and finally understand the code that uh, the brain uses. So any tests on humans likely? Um, so uh, this is not my field tests on humans, but yes, uh, just generally in the world uh, it is moving to more and more tests on humans. So primarily patients, but uh, conceivably in the nearest future we will see some Tests, even in normal five people. Five to ten years? Or? Five to ten years, yeah. <laughs> What's the main purpose of your research today and how close are you to bringing it to life? So, our main purpose of uh, brain machine interfaces is practical. So, we mm, want to develop devices for mm, people, for patients uh, with neurological problems like paralysis or sensory disabilities. So we want to develop um, systems that could uh, restore the ability to move and feel. So, uh, and uh, this is all uh, moving very rapidly to real applications um, in, in patients. So again, five to 10 years and we will see uh, results. the results yeah, in, in, in clinical world. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're done. <laughs> <laughs>